Hello and good evening again. Welcome to the second episode of Safari Canyon. You can clearly tell from the footage that I already built a little bit more in this canyon over here. It is a lot further than it has been at the end of the last episode, which is down to the fact that I did a bit of stuff off screen. Um, I lost a few recordings because uh, the game crashed and yeah, just a few things uh, here and there I needed to change. So yeah, you can see there's a whole lot of foliage already in. There's a whole lot of stuff. It's it's already quite changed. Um, it, it just is very important that I, I did have uh, all the footage together for this episode and yeah, there's a lot of stuff I already changed um, but there's still a bunch of stuff to do because uh, there's a second bridge we haven't used yet there is um, a whole bunch of area which looks pretty dull because there wasn't uh, too many rocks already put in I needed to figure out a lot about the traversable area so the traversable uh, traversable what, what kind of word is that uh, is the traversable I don't want to say that the, the walkable area for the animals um, was still a big issue so I was putting down a lot of rocks and you will see in, in, in a few seconds that I ran into some issues that my um, elephants were complaining since they didn't have enough space to walk because I you know last episode we talked about the ridiculous hitboxes and then the animals decided to oh well you know what with the these rocks over here, like 15 meters away from the area I would walk, I can't walk because I'm, I'm scared by the rock. So basically this rock over here, wait a second, in a few seconds you will see that rock over here. This destroys my elephant's welfare. As you can see, the elephant's not able to walk there any longer. I deleted it and here we go, the elephant could go there again. You can see all these circles around here, around the um, rocks. It's insane how insanely big those hitboxes, but I don't want to talk about this again. Um, I think. One thing I did talk about in in the last episode is that um, I um, you know since I lost some of the recordings I'm not even sure if I'd said this but I just wanted to quickly do it again because otherwise it, it feels unfair so everything I do critique about the game is on the highest potential level of criticism because the beta itself the game itself is absolutely amazing already in the state it is in the beta I, I could easily play the whole beta for the next couple of months and I would have a lot of fun with it um, and then keeping in mind what is all still about to come for the game is making me feel even more excited and even more uh, thankful for for already knowing the game and being able to play the game because it is absolutely magnificent it, it's stunning it's visually stunning but it's also like it, it has an atmosphere that I haven't experienced for a long long time it, I, it's also pretty different from what Planet Coaster is to me Planet Coaster is a game that I love to be creative in. I love to create things I love to I love to sell tell stories with the creations I love to do different things I love to, to build coasters but the one thing I can't do with Planet Coaster is spend hours in there and just watching stuff. Like, uh, yeah, I like watching a coaster. It's visually stunning and, and it has a lot of uh, really weird satisfaction aspects to it. But it's not as crazy as seeing actually an animal walking around like like crazy. It's, it's something really, really amazing and I, I really would love to see more of it in the future. So well, and uh, yeah, you can see that I am again uh, tackling the traversable area issue here. You can see I really wanted to make the elephant be able to walk into the back area where the waterfall is and I, I figured that this is something very, very important to do. So yeah, uh, quite a few things that are uh, very important uh, in this game are mostly that uh, you, you make uh, the animals walk there. But anyways, to the point uh, that I, I just um, started to, to talk about is really spending time in the game to only watch the animals room around and just having having them live in your zoo, just watching them, it's amazing. I completely went over time with my stream yesterday just by a couple of hours, <laughs> I want to say, but it actually was an hour. But because I just wanted to film and watch and look more at just look what the animals do It was just so pleasing to see them doing stuff and I have to admit that there's this one thing I am 
I even feel bad. I even feel bad that I didn't believe them at the first glance. But it's all always the same about games being advertised at the beginning. You know, when Frontier just released the first footages and gameplay stuff, you know that it is highly polished. You know that every single frame has been checked a million times before they release it. You know, they are not even just doing the stuff we do. We, they just don't jump in, do one recording and that's it. That's it. They, they do record until they have the perfect shots, the perfect framing, the perfect everything. It is absolutely important for them that the, the game is shown in the most beautiful way. You know, they are not Atari showing us a crap weird trailer of roller coaster game that remains unnamed here. They are really paying a lot of attention to make it visually pleasing and completely insanely great looking. But here's the point about that. This doesn't really show the, the truth of a game. However, it's it's most likely for, for Planet Coaster and Planet Planet Games and also all the other stuff, it's it's really showing most likely the truth. So you can be very trust oh, it's it's actually pretty trustworthy what Frontier shows. However, it I really was fearing a bit of the stuff that they talked about because it, it, it felt like a very, very over-promising little thing over there when they started to say like, hell, you'll be even po able to tell which animal exactly is in your habitat and you will be able to name it without actually clicking on it because you can you can watch and learn about their habits and, and then just see and, and tell who that is and you can actually see that they um, immediately react to all the changes you do in their environment and all, you know, all these kind of things. So that's something I don't necessarily believe, or I didn't even believe at the beginning it would happen, simply because I felt like that's maybe a little bit too much and I really feel bad again for thinking that way because they knocked it out of the park. It worked just like a charm. I was able to tell every single animal who is who, who is doing what after just a few minutes of checking my habitat. So for example, let's go back to my mandrel. There was one mandrel, I called the mandrel Carlson at the beginning, um, because there's German, uh, is it even, I don't even know German story or German uh, tale, which is or a series or I don't know, a TV show, I don't even wanna, how it's called, it's called, um, literally translated Carlson from the roof, uh, in German it's Carlson vom Dach, which is um, a little bit of a story of a, of a kid always being on the roof, top of a building, so very briefly spoken, it's definitely different, but I, for the sake of, of, of the short uh, amount of time I have in here, it's, it's easier to put it that way. So um, I just named it that way because it was always always sitting on top of the roof. And the funny thing about this is that it was the only one. And as you know, after, unfortunately, Carlson has passed away <laughs> weeks ago, <laughs> two weeks ago. <sighs> he was my best man. Carlson, rest in peace. <laughs> when Carlson uh, passed away, uh, there was no other mandrel being in that spot again. And, and then I changed a little bit about the um, habitat. I, I put down a bit more climbing frames. I put down a few more tools and toys and stuff like that. And then I, I figured that there's a new one, which was um, Helen. I called her Helen. And Helen was actually the one always sitting by the same sprinkler and, and just really um, pro croning, proning, I want throning, it's the word, throning on a rock um, nearby a sprinkler. And so it's, it's really cool to see that they have their own habits. And it's looking at the animals and following them for minutes, there is not a single animation that feels repetitive. You can tell if you look closely that there are some animations that are repetitive, but the cool thing is they are so seamlessly working together that you don't really see that uh, feel that they're repetitive. They are just always creating a new overall movement and animation by the different um, the, the, the different uh, order in, in which the animations play, by the different kind of way they, they act. And all these kind of things working together make up for a wonderful, absolutely amazing and stunning game already. So I, I just can spend hours and hours just watching my animals and I'm so sad that I, you know, if they told me, you know what, you can't play the beta but you can still open Planet Zoo and just watch your animals do what they do uh, and just close it all off, I would be I would be okay with that. I would still open the game every day and watch my animals. It's, tr it's true. It's, I'm not even lying. I'm not even lying. It's that great. So there's a whole bunch of positive stuff about this game. Uh, it needs to be talked about. Um, on the other hand side, last episode I did already talk about the fact how many bugs <laughs> there were. Anyways, so this is one of my most favorite builds in the entire 
a beta, I have to say. This is the viewing platform for our African Canyon. And oh boy, let me tell you, the view is just stunning. Uh, when we do the tour on Sunday, if I calculate correctly, uh, will be the final tour of the park. Oh god, or oh, zoom. I, uh, it's very hard because I've already been, been recording it right now and, and I'm just doing the calculation in my head right now. So I hope that Sunday is the right day. Just keep an eye on my channel. You will potentially see it by the name of the title of the video. You will see how it's called and then that's too. But doing the tour of this park will then uh, give you the, the wonderful view from this little viewport over here or the view viewing station. The only thing I'm s it's so sad that this whole park, this whole zoo will be lost. It's, you know, we can already say rip beyond the camel because it, it, it's gone. I'm, I'm, I'm quite sure they won't be usable in the final game. I, I think, you know, usually I would say, hey, Frontier say they didn't know, but uh, with all the bugs and all the things to change, I'm quite sure there's so much to do on the code and on, on the game itself. And I'm even believing there's a bunch of stuff that they might change according to the feedback. So I'm fairly certain that these files might not work in there just to ensure that they are not crashing the game or whatever. Because if I would be Frontier, I would totally not allow these files because they're like, during the course of the beta, they did so many changes and so many things that they fixed. I, I, I necessarily don't would I, I don't want to see that happening because I, I would fear that this causes too many issues because obviously a lot of people would go to their beta parks to really be on on top of things right at the beginning of the final launch game, um, having conservation credits and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I even wonder if we keep the conservation credits though. I would love to see that they will kind of null, null it all again, just go back to back to null and zero, because I think it would be quite unfair also for the other people joining the game when there are already people sitting on 100k conservation credits and, and just be, uh, you know, top of the line from the get-go and the other ones have zero chance to get there in the franchise mode. I think that would be kind of stupid. So again, that would be another point for this. But, you know, it, it would also be pretty unfair if you have already your uh, absolutely amazingly running zoo, as I have over here. Like, I, I, I just need to keep the game running for like 10 minutes. I've got like a million... Uh, a million in-game currency, whatever. It's just easy, easily getting money and throw it out uh, and just enjoy building whatever you want. It, it basically became a sandbox in terms of building for me. So I, I don't want to see that in the final game because I, that makes no sense. So that's why I definitely believe we won't see the uh, files used in the final game. And, uh, you know, sometimes in life, I, I said this already when I changed my whole channel a year ago, I, I said sometimes you need to kill your babies to move forward and that and that's what I want to see here as well um, they they do need to kill the baby which is the beta or the beta content and move forward clean it all off and give it a, a polished game totally up for this I, I am not even I don't even see any issue at all about this so I'm really hoping that this is something they will do eventually so yeah I can't wait to see it I can't wait to play the final game you can see I'm building a bridge over here out of locks and I might also add that I was being a bit lazy here so this was already at the end of the first part of my live stream so I wanted to really finish it off at this point I really wanted to make sure that I'm done with it because I I felt like hell it's already 1am I needed to go to work next day and I did definitely want to film a lot more to do some cinematics which you will get don't worry about this guys I will spread these cinematics over the next couple of weeks uh, well weeks not but the next week will have some cinematics going on uh, because I felt like this is important also to show you the beauty of the park maybe I'm splitting it into two episodes uh, one containing this uh, wonderful African habitat over here and maybe the Indian elephant area and then the other one will contain the rest of the zoo I was able to catch some cinematics I think the well, I think this would be enough to, to have two videos out of it I don't want to make even more of it so then we have the proper tour then we will have a one special video if I'm able to do this, which I I just I need to do it. There is no way in not doing it. I must do it. It's so it will be so hilarious, but I must do it. So uh, for those of you for for the insiders, they potentially know what I'm talking about. But yeah, it's uh, definitely definitely a must a must do. Yeah, what I also figured is uh, I don't know. I'm I'm very happy they did fix it because that was one of the things um, I was really I was really worried about because they didn't fix it until the very end of the beta. But the feeding mechanics of the game were very buggy at the beginning, and many people knew that a 
a uh, food enrichment item most likely was the reason why the feeders weren't refilled by the uh, keepers and eventually this led to your animals starving because they didn't get enough food out of the food enrichment items which ended up um, a big mess uh, in a big mess because your zoo was going down from there because our animals were starving and you needed to then get in and delete the enrichment items which led into a l lower welfare of the animals and not getting babies and you know vicious circle so at the end they did fix it and this was also the reason why i was putting them all in i was then also getting another giraffe just because we can and because i got all the conservation credits from the awesome community as mentioned in the last episode so yeah a few things uh, that were really insane but that's already it guys that's the end of the actual time lapse footage now i have a few screenshots for you that'll show how the final result of this wonderful habitat looks i needed to include this one over here i'm i'm honest with you guys because i love this view through the waterfall which is a little bit more blurred out i don't know i like just the art style of it you can actually tell in in the background that this whole canyon really came alive with all the foliage and something just so freaking insane here's one shot without the blurry water in front you can just see all the details, all the reflections, all the cleanliness of, of the image. It's just visually very pleasing, I must say. We have a giraffe drinking over here. Um, and the last shot is showing another giraffe close up. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. There's one more episode about this franchise zoo and then we're done. Until then, have a wonderful time and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys. Alrighty guys, thank you for watching this video, I really do appreciate that. As always, uh, make sure to check out also my social media channels, you can find me everywhere under at RudyRandCamel. Also, big thanks to the crew, uh, you can see it on the left hand side right now. And as always, if you want to see more, you click that card on the top right. And if you want to stick around because you like the stuff you've just saw, you just saw, whatever, you know what I mean, just uh, click that sub button which is to the bottom right of the screen right now. But everything else I can say is have a great time and see you next time. Bye guys.